at the end of the day, winning your lane just doesn't matter anymore in Dota. They go to the small camp. They go to greener pastures and they end up higher net worth than you are and you end up crying to yourself so hopefully uh once analog does get on something maybe a little bit more comfortable for him to carry into the scheme of the game as opposed to just those early stages i think we could see uh some more success because again mechanically just what a gifted guy you just got to really see him put it to work in i think a larger strategy and hikori interesting choice here with the snap fire you've got Honestly, a pretty substantial amount of teamfight setup to work with here with these first three heroes. Disruptor, Tide, and Snap can do a pretty substantial amount. They've got some damage, they've got some lockdown, they've got a lot of means to maybe try to isolate the IO. They can't necessarily force a lot of movement out of him per se, but if you can break up that duo, if you can get him out of tether range, then all of a sudden both heroes are not useless by any means, but they become so much less effective. So if you're Hikori... I like the fact that they're maybe keying in on that, but not exclusively, right? With this lineup, they still have the means to take some traditional team fights just straight up, but they're giving them a little bit of maybe two or three different routes for how they want to approach engagements. Yeah, and it's an interesting hero to pick up because you are definitely adding it to your Roche power. It's something that for Snapfire does really well. You go for the little shredder pretty much always, as well as that lane is rough for Io. They immediately gush you up, they focus fire you. Usually the snap ends up rushing a medallion, and then you are a negative seven armor hero in a lane that's really easy to get punished in. And Mars Keeper of the Light. Now Every single time it's available to them, even when they had a stand-in all the way back when Sladen was uh, playing for Infamous for a while, they still relied on this Keeper of the Light, and it's an interesting pick to go for. I wonder how they're actually going to combo it with their mid lane, because usually when we see this position for Keeper of the Light, and usually, of course, with Io, it never feels like you are a 5 Io. It feels like he's always going to get a little bit of farm, but you don't really see a 5 Keeper of the Light. He is going to be played by Michael, assuming it's going to be a Michael Keeper of the light but it's interesting to see how they actually decide to run it and what they end up putting it with is going to be i think very important i like the ban from hikori i think ember would have done really nicely for them as well as matching up good versus the void spirit so we'll have to see because that's where i think alone alone could end up on the mars worst case scenario but i think give alone a hero that's going to be able to stay out on the map indefinitely with the chakra magic and then infamous they just never need to stop running at you they're just always going to be foot on the gas yeah, we'll see what the choice is for them. There's still, realistically speaking, plenty of options. Some of the maybe more problematic mid laners were taken away. You've got the Tiny out there. The Kunkka obviously has just been banned pretty much all day long. But see what it is they can try to get for themselves here to, as you said, really take advantage of that. If your mid laner and your Coddle duo can just keep pushing forward, not only do they get farm, can they make plays, but you are creating... Scenarios where this gyrocopter really could not be pressured, because if you're going after him, then you're just going to leave Coddle and that opposing mid laner free to do anything that they want elsewhere on the map as well. So, something that can have that consistency to force Hikori's attention onto it is certainly going to be advantageous for them. In the meantime, Infamous trying to key in uh, on that carry position, really the only thing Hikori are missing right now, the Faceless Void and the Luna, both banned away. So the Luna... I've been picked up pretty consistently today. Not going to happen here. The Faceless Void, maybe not quite as popular so far in this pro series, but both of those heroes would have been dangerous for them to deal with, and both heroes at RDO in particular has proven himself to be very adept with. Yeah, and I think now what will RDO want to play into the Gyrocopter matchup? That's the only question I have in my mind. Are we going to see him go for a hero like the TB? Are we going to see him go for the Medusa? It the end of the day, when it comes to this Iron Gyrocopter, it's always a battle of range, whether or not you can keep the gyro off of you. Of course, relocate makes that pretty difficult, but that is the the thought in its essence, where if you can win that matchup, then it's very difficult for Lumiere to actually get on top and punch a lot of these heroes. I think that's where the uh faceless void again pairing with the snapfire too, just a good band because it does kind of play towards the synergy that Hikori are trying to foster right now. But now, Infamous, they got to pick up something for a loan. A lane versus a void spirit. Simple pick. Go for the storm. 
Makes a lot of sense. And that's your hero that's going to be Shocker, that's going to have that steroid and be able to sail for the map a long, long time, as well as actually beating Void Spirit in a lot of situations in that mid. It's just really hard for any melee hero to play versus the Storm. Mm -hmm. And now you've got a little bit more to work with uh, in terms of that IO play as well. If someone like the Mars can sort of set up for an initiation, you have the relocate in, obviously, but then you have the Storm who could zip uh, his way forward as well. So gives infamous maybe a lot of dynamic strength in terms of if we find an opening we can immediately try to push it meanwhile for hikori they choose to put rdo on the phantom assassin a hero that obviously has a lot of damage potential we'll have to see though about durability that's always kind of the concern with that pa you can hit hard but a lot of the time she's not really able to sustain a whole lot of hits to herself and Infamous, I don't know. They've got a little bit of lockdown. Nothing massive, nothing that a BKB uh, wouldn't really fix. So, Corey might just be in a situation to get RDO going early, get that farm up to an acceptable rate in the first 15 to 20 minutes, and just sort of roll from there. Yeah, and if anything, I was thinking about heroes like maybe you see the Ursa, or maybe you see, uh, an, again, one of the ranged carries that matches up pretty well. But this PA, it's almost like a weaver when it comes to this lane, where it's a safe laner that will allow you to actually get on top and punish this Keeper of the Light. I think with this PA pickup, you're saying, I'm not going to be bullied. I'm looking to kill your four over and over and over again. And your supports are razor thin on Infamous. You have an Ion, you have a Coddle. I can't name a squishier duo, maybe a Rubik somewhere in there would be even easier to kill. But if RDO can get just a little bit of a good start, I think he really is going to be able to run away with a lot of the game, as well as forcing both the Storm and the Gyrocopter to not do nearly as much damage, because naturally you have the blur. It's going to force the Gyro to go for maybe an ugly item that he doesn't want to go for very early on. And we'll have to see, because yet again, when you talk about spirits, you talk about runes, you talk about power runes, and you talk about their item timings, whether or not we're going to see that that Yule Scepter hit at around the same time. We're going to see this Orchid. Everything is going to come down to really who can take those early map rotations and then really just start to get the ball rolling. Normally, <laughs> a push forward from RDO here under the cover of that smoke, and no one's come close enough to actually pop it, but... Well, it's a nifty play. It just doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. His teammates already got the ward down over on the high ground, so... They do spot this rotation, so they know that there's multiple heroes there. I don't think they're really going to go headlong into them, but just kind of interesting for RDO trying to test out if there was maybe any sort of early early ward in this middle lane as Analog actually gets hit twice. That's... Hmm. Oh, there's a third one. Okay. He's funny. Wait, they're... They really want this... <laughs> okay, I mean, they're just slowly but surely trying to sort of walk it in in terms of where that ward is but well, the funny thing is too the, the radiant observer on the high ground here was actually placed before the observer ward placed on the low ground so i feel like they really have a good idea of where it should be and analog's got a sentry in the quick buy but it's, it's still it's kind of funny hey <laughs> I, I don't know i don't think i've seen somebody take that many just intentional tower shots looking for that ward before but He'll be fine. It's a little bit of health missing, but not going to force him back. Not going to really use any of those tangos just yet. So we will see whether or not he actually ends up tracking down uh, that ward. Meanwhile, over in the side lanes, the IO Gyrocopter, pretty much exactly what we expected here, going up against Tide and a Snapfire. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. They're going to have to wait for some levels, but... Once you get a point up in the cookie, maybe they can afford to get aggressive onto the IO. If you try to hit up Lumiere himself, I feel like a lot of that damage just isn't really going to stick. But the good news for Hikori, yeah, is exactly that. First point up in the little shredder means Lumiere really can't afford to go for that homing missile too often. If the second he sets it down, if Elmisho's in position to see it, he can just take it out right away. Yeah, and even all the way back when Infamous were pretty consistently running the Gyro 5, the, this was the only way the teams were able to actually figure it out. I think the added benefit of just the Gush plus a little Shredder synergy of just absolutely plowing through heroes, it just makes it feel even nicer, but it's really good this, in this lane, honestly, in the game, in the scheme of things. And not to mention the fact that Elmisho, he's taking down two now. Those are his two last hits. That, that's... 
I mean, it's 50 gold, so it's not like he's going to go for any sort of major purchase early, but you force Lumiere to use a little bit of mana, you take away the damage and the stun, and you get some money out of it for a 50 mana spell on really not the greatest or longest cooldown in the world. I mean, Alicia's going to be more than happy with that, and the only benefit I would say for Infamous here is that if the Little Shredder has to be used to counteract your homing missile, at least it's not being applied directly to your own heroes, but that's not too much of a silver lining at this point. Yeah, and we'll have to see an ape. You gotta be Ooh. careful. I, I, it's very interesting to see Omisho not get a uh, point up in the cookie because again, it, it's zero two four. That's the build that most of these snapfires are going for. But really, early on, just to be a little bit careful. It's funny he keeps going for it, the homing missile. But it's going to be interesting to see what Lumiere ends up going for in his skill build. If we're going to see him greed out for maybe a few points in the rocket barrage, like we've seen some Luna's skill up, just trying to win versus the Tide Hunter, or if we're just going to see Lumiere go headlong into farming as fast as he can which is the lumiere that we all know and love yeah more often than not lumiere in particular has trended towards the farm oriented decisions but yeah he's still holding that point i mean this is incredibly interesting to see him sort of wait this long maybe he's looking to see if they can sort of get this sentry ward out of here because if you can't stack any of these camps, then Flat Cannon is really not going to do you all that much good anyway. So, we're going to wait a little while, but while they wait, A is just getting absolutely pummeled here. He's taking a substantial amount of damage, and he's got to sort of be careful because Vitaly's still trying to get close to him. Lumiere's at least going to be able to run a bit of a distraction, but well, that's what they can do. And that's what they could do, again, as you mentioned, without a point in the cookie. They don't even have their stun, and they're able to hit pretty hard onto that IO. So, you got to assume... Once the Snapfire hits three or four, then a point will be put into that stun, and that's when A has to be so unbelievably careful with his positioning here early. Yep, and Vitaly gets his Ring of Health, so the danger has ended for Vitaly. Amisha, though, he uses... Okay, there it is. But still, down there the it is. Two points barrage. Up. That is yep. so much damage, and Amisha... Well, he's dancing around the trees. He's going to make him work for it, but... They will get it. First blood into Infamous's hands and into Lumiere's hands in particular. So they're able to strike first and we have our answer, right? As you said, two points in the rocket barrage. So you said the danger had passed for Vitaly. Well, two points up in the rocket barrage. He can still get harassed, maybe not constantly, but often enough to still make him sort of think uh, about what Lumiere is sort of doing in this scenario. So... The problem is that it affects his maybe farming efficiency in the long term, but at least they've got that to try and win out this lane as bottom. Ardio able to jump in alongside Gardic. They get Sacred out of position, and they do manage to bring him down for their first kill of the match. Yeah, and that's where, uh, even though you do have this Io on your team, again, not playing with any natural save coming from your offlaner or your four. They're great at dealing damage, but use one or two too many spells, and then suddenly Ardeo's on top of you, and there really is no good solution to the BA in that regard. I think big reason why they last picked it. There really isn't a good way to get her off of anyone. She should have a really free time, especially once you get a few more items. That's where you really need to be careful, especially on Michael, who wouldn't be too surprised with what he's doing right now. Probably going to just try to stack up his jungle as much as he can. Really accelerate alone. See what he chooses to do right now. Sort of making his way back towards the lane, but you already see he's gone to work. Let's say... Three stack there in the one camp. The Ancient stacked up two or three times as well, so... They are trying to set up... I would say four alone, but honestly... The Gyrocopter would have been candidate for that stack as well later on in the game but that would probably require him to maybe have a few more points up in the flat cannon so this adjustment to the gyrocopter's build does maybe shift those priorities a little bit but uh, as you said initially if all else fails it's just a loans to take get the storm spirit going try and make progress towards that first item early and if you can do that if alone can be the guy making those plays making those rotations early then infamous have a big opportunity to sort of put their opponents on the back foot Ooh, big rune. There you go. The power runes will start. Analog's got a regen rune. Gets to stay out on the map for pretty much as long as he wants. And that's where you definitely have to be careful. Especially all the damage they've already accrued top. They also know that they're not strong here. 
Well, this is a really good bait from El Mijo. Yeah, they're getting yeah, they're baited running. in, and there's the jump. The cookie stun is there. Lumiere's getting healed up, but it's just not going to be enough. Eh, bought a little bit of time, but again, not enough. A gets back to the tower. Lumiere won't make it with him, and Analog jumps in, gets the kill. Nicely done there. Regen rune being put to use as he was able to just heal up and push in for the fight, and now if you're infamous, there was really nothing to be done there. No one would have been able to TP in in time, and your gyrocopter just really can't hold off three heroes at this early stage in the game. So, Bakori able to make some aggressive maneuvers. And now the question is... Mine, I was going to say, what can they do mid? But Alone is going to get jumped in on, immediately able to zip himself away. So, he will be safe for now. But uh, while that rotation happened from Analog, Gardic did rotate mid to get a little bit of experience. So, no Static Storm just yet, but they are... Up putting again. a little bit of extra focus into trying to get him some levels is up top. Yeah, Vitaly gonna get hit by the cookie, pushed into Lumiere. There's the Ravage connecting onto two. Analog's back in as well, throwing down the remnant that keeps Lumiere locked in place. And they're gonna be able to take him down. Not quite a repeat. They didn't have the Ravage last time, but that certainly makes it easier. And again, Lumiere can't win the fight by himself, and the IO's not in a position to just heal his teammate through that, which for this point in the game, normally, ET, you're not that worried because. You know, how many times are our opponents going to try to gank Io Gyro top in the first eight minutes? And normally that's a correct assumption, but Hikori are really just sort of pushing the envelope in this top lane. Yeah, and they're really going for a play that I don't think Lumiere himself thinks is going to happen either. It was just really tight with the level six coming in from the Tide Hunter. Uh, unfortunately, the Garx oh, takes so much damage. Oh, he's going to deny the Arcane. Oh, nope, Michael. Michael did grab it, so they've got that, and Gardic, yeah, he should fall there. So, well, honestly, that was a nice play for the Disruptor. He glimpses away alone, don't really want to burn through that extra mana. He tries to go for the Deny, and even though he didn't get it, you forced Michael to take it instead of the Storm, but does have to give his life up afterwards. The good news, though, is that he's going to trade himself out for the Tier 1 tower top. Vitaly, El Misho, and RDO are all here, and there's no Glyph. It's already sort of already been popped yeah already been put on cooldown so trade your support for a tower not a bad play rdo is going to be the one to take it down and now well, your pa having sort of shifted away from the bottom lane now has maybe a little bit more room to work with in terms of finding farm although as i say that here comes lumiere in a but is this a kill that they can really get yeah rdo just jumps away el Misho destroys that homing missile and there's really not a whole lot to be done here. And now, if you're Lumiere and A, you've got to be careful. There's no Ravage, but the Tide is still sticking around in the area. He and El Misho could have looked to push in if the PA thought that she maybe had the damage to go for the kill. But as it stands, they're not going to get too aggressive. They're looking for the farm. They've got some stacked camps here to work with. So just keep on pushing it towards that early Battle Fury. Yeah, and it does feel pretty good for them right now. They're really able to push in wherever they want. They aren't too bothered, especially either side not having the Ravage available. There really isn't that much of an issue that they can really threaten. And something that's actually a problem with Hikori's lineup is that they don't really push too efficiently right now. Of course, they got that uh, safe lane tower pretty early on, which is very nice, but the rest of these objectives are going to come at a much slower pace. Same on the infamous side, where it really is going to feel a lot more difficult. A big reason why this bottom tier one is still alive is just because we have this Tide Hunter to constantly slow down the objective taking. It's where I think we're really going to need a few more items coming out from everyone before any objective is going to be under too much pressure. Lumiere making his way into the jungle, trying to get through this stack, but again, this is a little bit going back to what we were talking about before with the two points in the rocket barrage. The flat cannon is not quite as high of a level, so it ever so slightly slows this down. He's still relatively safe here, although, well... Maybe he won't be safe for too much longer. Here comes Hikori pushing their way forward. Vitaly's smoke will pop. But what do they really want to go for? They're going to try and jump in onto Michael. Analog. That's a nice bit of damage, but he needed that remnant to hit. If they get that connection, I think they find that pick. But without it, Michael's able to walk away and... Well, the stack remains in their hands. Lumiere did back off initially seeing those heroes coming forward. But the second they leave, he's back in trying to clean it up. But Hikori don't want to give up. Analog's pushing in again. Spells back up off cooldown, but it's all about what target he can really find here. And right now, he just stepped into... Okay. Into the missile, along with the Spear Stun, but there's going to be the Rapture to protect him into the Mortimer Kisses. So Sacred will follow. Misha, though, well, he acts as the bait. 
Alone zips in onto him. Gardic was just sitting behind that tree, waiting to drop the static storm. So alone... I mean, that... It's a simple bait, but it works. All you need is the one tree to block the vision, and you find two cores. And now A, with the relocate pulling him back, may be taken down here as well. Although Misho's the only one hitting him, so... They're not going to be able to find that third kill, but they find two cores. Push in, maybe steal the last, like, fifth of that stacked camp, but... It is a big play for them to disrupt that farming rhythm for some of those cores on the Infamous side, but Infamous, do they really want to go back in? The arena was there, but Sacred doesn't throw it down. Alone, zipping all the way in. El Misho able to jump away with the cookie, but he's still getting jumped in on underneath the tower alone. Uh, I think he might have been a little bit upset about that bait play earlier, so he will find the kill, and now they're looking for more. They get the arena down into the spear. Analog locked down, dropped low. Not going to be able to finish him off just yet, though, as he will Astral step away. But meanwhile... Ardio and Vitali bringing the damage. They take down Michael. They're going to try and jump onto Alone. They know how much mana he burned going for that initial jump in. They'll pull him in with the Remnant, keeping him in place. Alone finished off, and Ardio will pick up the double. And now, spending that much mana on the kill onto Elmisho doesn't look quite as smart for him. Although, Sacred doesn't have any... Actually, he does have mana. He could get that... Yeah, could get that back with the Soul Ring. Ardio taken down. Gardic may very well fall here as well, but... Well, He's going to be able to throw down that kinetic field, and Sacred is the one who will die. So, honestly, part of me wanted to say that was a little bit greedy, but if you go for the kill onto RDO, I don't think you're really getting away either way, so you may as well pick it up while you can, and that trade at least is going to work out. But the Storm Spirit dying there for the support is maybe not quite as favorable. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, but it also just some small nifty plays on the Hikori side, like Gardic sending the Io all the way back to the base, so you have that little bit less HP and mana to work with. In addition to that, just not having anything to defend the Coddle, and okay, it's a lot of damage on Vitali. Spear That's gets the knockback, Elmisho stunned up. The Static Storm defense. gets thrown out, though, and alone, he's going to die again. Meanwhile, the Glimpse, oh, the Glimpse, it takes Lumiere all the way back, so he is not going to be a part of this fight. At least Sacred's able to find a kill onto Amisho there in the river, but again, yeah, these trade-offs are just going so poorly for them, and a little bit of it is maybe some of the decision-making on Infamous, with Alone in particular sort of zipping in there, but he makes the smallest... I'm not even really sure if you should call it a mistake, just a, a minor misplay, and Hikori have been able to punish him every time. In particular, Gardic on this Disruptor, he knows his job. He sits in the back, he waits till he sees the storm, and he hits him with the static. That's it. Oh. Totally, uh, uh, mm. That is not a good time for that pause. The Ravaged comes out. It did connect onto everyone here, including the Storm. So that Ball Lightning can come through, but it is going to take a little bit of extra time, which I don't know if that saves Vitali, but maybe it sets Gardic and Elmisho up to do something in response. There's a TP in from Analog here, so maybe that one or two extra seconds that they can buy with the Ravage might just be enough to bait infamous in and just like we've seen in the last couple of fights et this is where the decision making needs to shift a little bit and i think the pause may actually help them on that front you get the kill onto vitale sure go for that but anything beyond that point is going to be i think too complicated and too greedy for them to push for yeah, and I even wonder if now alone doesn't even go for the jump. Of course, he did get end up getting clipped by that Ravage, but I feel like if if I know anything about alone, alone is zipping for Vitali every single day of the week, but maybe after seeing everyone flooding their TP in, if he goes forward and he gets the kill onto Vitali, he's going to get Yules into a bunch of spells, into a slew of disables, so we'll have to see. Oh, and he went all the he way tried. for it. He oh, tried to oh, go he for did, it. Yes. He got Glenn. <laughs> Ugh. Sharper eyes than me. Yeah, I thought he had just sort of pulled up short, but he did get glimpsed all the way back. Sacred, meanwhile, does get taken down, so... Well, again, like we were just uh, just saying for Infamous, sometimes it's not even them making a mistake. That glimpse shuts it down. That should have been enough damage to get Vitali with the zip, but Arctic is just able to hit him up too quickly, and... Well, they really don't get much of anything out of that. I guess... If you want to sort of look at something, the Ravage is now on cooldown, so that opens up may maybe more opportunities for Infamous to try uh, at the aggression again later, but they don't get the kill, they lose their own offlaner, and at this point, maybe you just take a step back and start farming. The Kaya's up on the Storm Spirit, but uh, no Kaya Sanj, no BKB for him, both of those are queued up, the progress isn't great. Meanwhile, in the jungle, A is just by himself, he's going to get caught out 
and taken down. Analog rolling with the two supports. They'll find that kill, and now you see them pinging out that mid tower. They want the tier one, and they should be able to get it. Yep, it's incredibly free. It's a really nice smoke. They know that if they find any pick up in that top area, they can immediately go towards the mid lane, and it's exactly what they do. And now, really, the biggest item on the table is going to be Vitali picking up that blank dagger. Once he gets it, everything is going to come down to these initiations, and I think the biggest problem right now is it feels like both the storm spirit and the mars really aren't ahead enough in this game where they can set up by themselves in these side lanes we're still waiting for i think the kai Sanj on the storm i'm not even certain if alone is going to go for it if he feels like he might need that bkb even sooner just to play versus the void spirit yules but well they got to be careful mid jumping in mid they're going to look for a nice arena into the spear though that's going to break that up initially analog forced to step away with the astral but the yule scepter now has to be used defensively he needs to be able to get out of here good cookie play from el Misho into the static storm but the storm spirit actually just zips all the way through analog though still able to sidestep him but michael comes in to finally end the madness analog gets taken down guardic will fall as well and now vitali all by himself against five heroes they will take him down and infamous well the initiation into the fight was maybe not the most coordinated in the world but they got the job done three huge kills and on their own side, they really didn't use all that much. The arena has to get thrown down, and you do use your call down, I suppose, but you are able to win the fight. Now they're going to push their way forward, looking for this tier one. No glyph on the opposing side, so they're going to take that objective as well. Yeah, it's a huge initiation from Sacred. He was just able to connect perfectly onto the Void Spirit. He forced so much out. And at the same time, Alone just did such a good job of actually seeking and not making sure that he did escape on the Void. I think if Alone gets out there, it looks a little bit uglier. But unfortunately for Hikori, they make that play knowing full well they don't have Ravage. They have Ravage coming up in maybe another 15 seconds. And then I think that fight might actually turn in their favor. That's where they can stack their abilities on top of each other. And they're making the play now. But still, it's just a little bit you give over to your opponents. And then suddenly this Iro Gyro feels unkillable after a certain point. That's where you're really going to need to start relying on RDO to do more for you. And they're hunting, but I think the smoke only well, might get A. Cookie stun comes in, the remnants there, Mortimer Kiss is coming through, so yeah, A will fall, but, well, that's a four-man smoke. I think they were hoping for something a little bit more valuable. They could try to rotate top onto Sacred, but uh, back to that last fight, as you mentioned, they take it without the Ravage, which was very strange, but the other part about that, Gardic, every time they were able to beat Infamous before, and we actually sort of keyed in on that, it was because Gardic was saving the Static Storm to drop onto alone, as RDO speaking, getting dropped, Picked off in the jungle there. Alone starts it off with the Vortex. Sacred's going to connect with the ooh, with the arena into the spear. Now they're on to Gardic. He's going to throw down that Static Storm defensively. So Alone now in danger. And well, that kind of plays back into the point that I was trying to make just a moment ago. Gardic needs to save that ult for the Storm. This time, though, I'm not sure it's going to be enough because Alone has significant amounts of backup that's going to force out the Ravage from Vitali. It's a nice hit onto about four, but it's just not going to be enough. Analog still falls. Omisho now is on the run. They're going to be able to track him down. Who gets the kill? Sacred does. Throws out the spear, but uh, Misho getting away at least buys time for the Tidehunter to make his escape, but that is not the fight that they wanted, and Makori, when they can control the storm, they can win. When the Static Storm is there and Alone just has to sit in that circle for a little while, that is a winnable fight for them. Outside of those scenarios, things are going much more infamous favored across the last few engagements. Yeah, and it's so good from A to just get in there, relocates from the fountain, heals up his storm as much as he can, even has the uh, small ticks of fountain healing him up and alone. For a few seconds, there is a storm spirit sitting in fountain, getting healed by his Io, and it felt like they really ran out of damage. And I think that goes back to the kill top where they take out the PA and then simply walk down and find two or three more kills. And that's where Infamous can kind of ball themselves up into this unit where suddenly you're only a thousand gold away from an Ags on Michael. You're only, what, another six or seven hundred gold away from very key BKBs and a Satanic on Lumiere, and then suddenly this game gets incredibly more difficult for you. Mm -hmm. We've just seen the momentum shift. I mean, five minutes ago, uh, kill score was 10 to 5, I think, something in that range, if I remember correctly, and now Infamous have tied up the kill count. They've shifted the net worth lead into their own hands, and well, a lot of pressure onto Hikori now. You've got team fight combos to work with, but 
They need the execution and they need the right targets as well. Again, Malone has to be locked down in these fights. If you're not able to sort of account for his position and say he is here, we've got him stunned or silenced, then I'm not really sure that's a fight that you can even attempt to push into. But see what they can do. In the meantime, for RDO... Uh, what is he working on here? BKB finished up just now. He's going to look for the Deso for the damage output afterwards. So, well, this is kind of PA in a nutshell, right? You are very, very heavy on your damage. The survivability, though, is always the question with the BKB. It's going to be harder to lock her down, but she's still working on less than 1600 health. So, got to be very sort of careful and selective in terms of wh ooh, where you go and who you try to jump in on as a loan. He is lucky he didn't stick around much longer there, as he was getting dangerously close to the enemy, but should be able to get away with the haste rune. Sacred Meanwhile TPing out, and this smoke play from Hikori is not going to connect. Yeah, and they've got to be so careful in this bottom area. And Infamous, they even use their last relocate just to farm even more on Lumiere. I think not anticipating any aggression coming out from Hikori, but they try to make something happen with RDO's BKB, and unfortunately, it's those air balls that are really going to start to make you feel like you're falling behind because you look at it now once you have the satanic finished up on the gyrocopter as well as double bkb coming out from the storm spirit and mars that's when gardic doesn't feel like a hero it's going to feel like what should be this the silence the static storm that you're unable to fight around and what we saw breaking up so many fights in the previous game is just going to be ignored simply because you've been able to claim this net worth advantage for yourself not to mention back to the keeper of the light who now has this aghanim scepter all of these fights and engagements are going to get so messy for you and analog gotta be careful and now what is Go your response the to the willow wisp they don't really have it yep spear comes in static storm gets thrown down defensively but it's not going to matter. Willow is deployed. It keeps everybody in there. Analog and Gardic both taken down. El Misho now on the run. Sacred getting close. And there it is. He's going to get the slow down. That's going to allow Alone to get in for the Electric Vortex. And El Misho will be picked off. So we talked about Hikori having these big sort of team fight combos to work with. But with the Willow Wisp there, now Michael... I mean, he's kind of just as intimidating. That Willow Wisp ruins everything that Hikori want. They really can't group up anymore. They lose that fight. They're going to lose control of the Roche Pit. The Aegis will go into Alone's hands. So now, if you're the Storm, you were already playing very aggressively. And now you have that get-out-of-jail-free card with the second life. Yeah, and that's where the really the one you're trying to look at is where are we finding our next Ravage? Where's our next play going to come? Is it going to be on this Aghanim Scepter finished up from Analog? Is it going to be once we have the Deso on Ardeo? Because right now there are quite a few hurdles you have to leap over if you're Hikori. You need to find the Coddle, you need to find the Wisp, you need to isolate these supports, and look at alone! All He's the way dead. in. On to El Misho and... Uh... And then chakra and you're back to full 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 mana outside just, the base. There's just no consequences for that kind of play. Almisho can't do anything by himself and didn't have any teammates to defend himself. They take the kill, they take the tower, and Infamous are really, at this point, threatening, maybe not to end the game, but to just take a definitive advantage. One that Hikori are going to need, uh, what, 10, 15 minutes to potentially sort of come back from unless they can hold here. But look at that tier 3. It has already lost half of its, okay, half of its HP. Analog though jumping in. They're going to try to take down A first. They are dropping him low, and they will find the kill. So that may very well be enough to sort of put this push to an end. But now there it is, the jump in. Vitaly, however, going to be able to deploy the Ravage. They got the Static Storm down as well, but it's just not enough. The Arena gets deployed in a very reactive sort of scenario, but it was the perfect spot to react to those team fight ults coming in. Sacred just shuts it down, and... I mean, this has to be a lane of racks, really. Buybacks for Hikori are not in a great spot, so you get the Tide back in, but a Tide with no Ravage, both of your supports are dead, so Infamous are free to just keep on going forward. Yeah, and you take a look at Ardeo, who was in that fight. He TP'd at the outpost trying to get behind absolutely everyone. He wasn't a part of the Wisp kill at all, and he got his BKB forced out of him from alone. Again, it's just alone forcing the issue and finding those little holes. And as soon as there's any threat in for the Gyrocopter, both the Mars and the Storm Spirit leap in front of him with their BKBs, take any damage, any risk. And Ardeo... Oh, oh the bait. Are you kidding me? Cancels his Boy own missed. TP oh, alone? 
Hello? He's not going to get it. They don't have it, but... Well, they are going to bring the reinforcements, and now they have a chance to get in onto Analog. So RDO may have gotten away. His teammate, though, may not be quite as fortunate. The Glimpse, however, will be deployed. That's going to pull the Gyrocopter away, at least, but the Spear Stun is still there. The Electric Vortex is deployed. Analog dropped low. Not taken down just yet. Rumal alone, actually dangerously low himself, but he's got the Aegis. So even if he dies, he's coming back into the fight. Trades himself out for that kill into the Void Spirit, but... At this point, Infamous kind of feel like they've gone a little too far here. They got close to RDO, they chased all the way in for Analog. If you go any further than that, it's just too much greed and not enough left in the tank. So they back themselves away, but I mean, you look at plays like that. That play started with RDO trying to get a solo kill onto Michael. And sure, Michael died eventually, but he was able to hold his ground for a very long time, long enough to get his own teammates into the fight. And I mean, if your PA can't kill the Coddle, in that short of a time frame, then you have a serious problem with your damage. Yeah, and if they kill Ardeo there, they look like geniuses, right? It, it just feels like that is exactly the worst possible scenario for Hakori. But still, there are signs of life. These supports are very killable. It's the biggest advantage they have is that Ardeo with Adesso is going to be able to rip and tear through anyone. They've got Ravage coming up as well. It really feels like one good initiation coming in from Hakori, and this game is dead even back again. The only problem is you are one Rex down bottom and you're playing versus the Storm Spirit with an Arcane Rune. And if you're not forcing these BKBs out early on in these fights, it feels like Infamous are really being able to pick and choose whenever they actually commit these items. And it's just impossible for Hikori to fight when they're on the table. Yeah, now well, they're starting to lose a little bit more in terms of those objectives. Tier 2 taken down in the top lane. So map is going to start to shrink really more and more as this one goes on but if you're infamous pushing for the towers okay trying to find pickoffs outside of the base okay but i'm not really sure how much further they want to go as Gardic is dropped low but they're not able to bring him down that's a good static storm into the ravage connecting onto two they take down a they need lumiere to fall as well can they actually get him the satanic is not really enough to keep him alive so lumiere does fall the tali gonna get traded out in exchange though but Corey are trying to hold the line the pa is doing significant amounts of damage but there's that will o -Wisp really breaking up this initiation and allowing the rest of infamous to pull back but well that maybe felt like they were just trying to do a little bit too much there jumping in with that io gyrocopter just right on the front line and i mean they get punished for it ravage into static storm is still too much for the, oh my goodness too much for them to deal with speaking of which rdo with the crit able to take down michael alone watching from the high ground but can't do a whole lot to defend his teammate yeah, and it really is no underestimation to say that that was a crazy relocate. You send your only two heroes that don't have BKB into really the worst possible scenario you could expect. And even though he pops the Satanic on the Gyrocopter, he still dies to this PA who is just right-clicking him. Not just that, now RDO is going to have a bottle, a DD rune. Gonna probably wait on this, unfortunately does expire 30 seconds faster so you can't play around that advantage too much anymore but still this game is definitely not over and RDO is definitely going to only get stronger before that was just a death so now he's got 3.5k gold in the bank this game is far from being won and alone yeah, bottom. that's not a kill that he can just straight up get anymore you've got that mech online so Amisha was able to heal through it in the storm he had to pop the BKB and TP home so it's not just like an issue where he's saying oh damn i didn't get that kill he has to pop a bkb charge and put that on cooldown to then back away so it is more than a missed opportunity now it's a potential opening for hikori to push forward knowing the storm is bkb less for another 45 seconds yeah and that's where this next roach being a minute 30 seconds could be even longer is going to i think very heavily favor infamous because even though they've got a 12k net worth lead I think they're going to be a lot more picky about what fights they go for. They need a few more items. Lumiere is, even though it feels like they're neck and neck, and it looks like they're neck and neck, all of the net worth on the PA is just that little bit more efficient, as well as Ardeo's just getting an MKB. I, I'm i trying to figure out why he's getting an MKB. I think it's mainly because of the blinding light coming in from Michael, but once he has that, there is no excuse. He is going to win this, this carry matchup, and... Until then, you really need other heroes to start shoring it up. But even A is really started to fall behind. It's just the Holy Locket Ghost Scepter. And I think no mech, nothing like that. So everything is really up to Lumiere to survive once he gets gone on. 
Yeah, and part of the reason why he wanted to pick up that Satanic earlier on, but... Well, you never know if that's really going to be enough, and taking a look at Lumiere... Uh, I mean, he's got a BKB and an MKB queued up. The MKB makes a little bit more sense on him compared to the Phantom Assassin, but as you said, it, it might very well just be because of the Blinding Light. Try and power your way through it. It's a lot of gold to spend in that scenario, but you never know alone. Trying to hide on the road, Trish. Actually, Analog's still caught up to him, so he's going to be able to pull him back in with the Remnant. Silence comes out from the Pulse as well, but nobody else was there. RDO and Vitali were sort of off to the east trying to track down Michael. They're not able to find that kill, so... Bad news, no kills. Good news, you ran everyone away from the Roche Pit, but it's another two minutes. That's an unfortunate timer if you're Hikori, but very nice for the side of Infamous. They don't have to worry about now rushing over for that Roche Pit fight, as Alone is going to make the jump. BKB active preemptively, though, so that static is not going to be enough to really keep him locked in place. Oh, the mana. problem is, yeah, where did his mana go? He used all of it, and... Okay, I mean... So we're, 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 we're making baby steps here, right? He pops the BKB before zipping in so that the static doesn't lock him down, so at least there's that, but then you forget about having enough mana to actually leave. So... Yeah. Oh, secrets. Oh, good disarm coming in from that halberd. BKB popped into the spear stun, but you need the damage. Buyback from the storm. He's going to try to join the fight, TPing onto the tower, zipping in now, and RDO... Dangerously low on HP, trying to fight his way through this. So look at the damage coming out into the Ravage now, as Vitali does have to sacrifice himself, but Ardio is going to be able to get away. TP's himself home just in time. His teammates, though, may not be quite as fortunate alone. Okay, I mean, he just used all of his mana and ended up dying for it. This time, though, he may very well get away with it, as he's trying to track down Analog. I'm not sure if he can catch up. Never mind, he gets enough mana to zip forward from that Coddle. And, well, last time you sort of zipped to your own death. This time he's got the backup, so he's able to find that kill, and... Unfortunately for Infamous, that long Roche timer is still there, so no Roche for 45, but they can try to set up on this sort of west side high ground and really put themselves in a position where once Roshan comes back up, Hakori aren't going to be able to push through. As of right now, there's no towers to TP to. They'd have to get past really multiple wards in this west side jungle, so I mean, they could still do it, but they're not going to have any sort of elements of surprise unless they smoke up inside of their own base. Yeah, and really, it's a really good buyback from Alone, one that almost bit him there, where you got silenced immediately from the Void Spirit. If that Ravage connects him to the Storm, that is a horrible situation for Infamous then. I think they still pretty convincingly get both the Tide and the Void Spirit, but putting Alone on the back foot for another 120 seconds would be massive, and now, unfortunately, all of the control that Hikori have worked so hard to gain over the past two or three minutes is just thrown out the window because of one bad fight, and Roche is actually respawning in 25 so now it feels like the shoe is on the other foot because all these waves are in gonna get another free tier 2 mid and then suddenly the fight is going to be all around the pit and I don't know now if if really everything is flipped if Akori is going to feel confident enough to look for that engagement outside it's just again if they want the fight around the Roche but they've got a smoke basically on their own tier 3 to actually yeah, pretty much on their own tier 3 tower. If they take even a step further forward, then the ward spots them. Never mind, the ward's gone. But that ward may not spot them, but they do have the other ward here. Gotta go fast. On the high ground, but yeah, the rush attempt is happening, so... Do Hikori know this is happening? They may suspect, but I'm not sure they have any confirmation, and at this point... Damn. Either way, this is already taking too long. The Roche is gonna fall before they can even leave the base, and... Who picks up once? Lumiere... Gonna be able to get himself the shard, along with the Aegis. So... This gyrocopter, I mean, he's big. He's got the scepter upgrade. He's got the shard upgrade. He's sitting at level 22. He's got two lives and a satanic and an IO. So, I mean, really, how do you, how do you get to him in any capacity that's actually going to work throughout the entirety of a fight? If you take him down once, he's back up. If you drop him low, satanic and IO are there. If you go for the IO, well, you have to kill him in about two seconds. Otherwise, an angry gyrocopter is going to start just chunking them down. Yeah, they have to be careful here, and okay. okay. A bit of initial damage, but they don't quite have the follow-up. Sacred, ooh, trying for the spear play, not going to be able to get it, but it doesn't really matter. Lumiere continues to hit the tower. The IO sort of regroups to heal him up, and that's tier 3. Not dead yet, thanks to the glyph, but it is taking so much damage. The remnant, however, pulls him back in. They threw a dagger out there from RDO as well, but... 
Uh, they need more. The glimpse is going to be there. The kinetic field will be thrown down. They don't want to commit the static just yet, as this is still Lumiere's first life, but it's just not going to be enough. Lumiere's getting healed up, and Analog... Ooh. Oh, Good. Already DC'd once this game. It looks like he is still having some issues. 316 ping says RDO, so... Both of those two main cores on the Hikori side have now dropped out. Hopefully, a quick reconnect can sort of alleviate their ping issues. But even if they're both back in and their sort of ping is manageable, they're still in such a rough position here trying to hold this high ground. Lumiere really has not been hit very hard to this point. And, and you see how far away alone is staying. He knows that the only way he could possibly mess this up is if he somehow gets clipped by a Ravage, gets clipped by a Silence, doesn't pop his BKB immediately, and then he dies without buyback. So he is just being so patient, letting his teammates handle everything at this point, and you're broken. Here we go. Pushing for that second lane of Rax. They took bottom a while back. Looking for top now as well. Vitali blinks in, drops the Ravage, but alone, he's going to zip his way in. But he did zip onto the Sacred, or not the Sacred, excuse me, the Static Storm, but his BKB is active, so they continue to fight. They lost the Isle, but that Isle will immediately buy back, looking to rejoin his teammates. And uh, the Cory, eh, it's going to start to fall apart a little bit there. Vitali and Omisho taken down. Ardio was able to fall back. They've got Analog still in the fight as well, but he needs to heal up in the Fountain. All the while, that top lane of Rax will be finished off. Lumiere is able to clear it out, and now... Well, honestly, they could just rotate mid. They've still got the Aegis. The Io is presumably going to be regrouping with his teammates once he actually gets into the base, but RDO doesn't want to wait that long. Jumping in, gets the quick kill onto Sacred, taking down that frontliner, but they still have to deal with Lumiere. The Yule Scepter is going to be used onto him, but... Well, do they push in? RDO is going to need some big crits out here to really do much of anything, especially now that A has rejoined the fight, so... Maybe they don't really go in at all, but if they don't, then this is almost certainly going to be Megas picked up by Infamous, so... They've got to make a choice, but Alone's going to make it for them. Jumping in. Gardic taking down right away. Alone finds the first kill. They get the Will-O-Wisp down onto Analog to keep him locked in place as well. They even clip RDO with it, so the Phantom Assassin is stuck in the fight. And that PA well, will eventually be taken down. Got one last kill there onto Michael, but that's not really going to be enough to matter. He'll immediately buy back, though. Uh, will they get the buyback from the Void Spirit as well? Because without that, I'm not really sure if they can do this. Not really sure if they can do it even with the buyback, but... They've got to give it a go. Tier 4s are under attack. Vitaly's back into the fight. No Ravage, but they're going to look for the quick pick off on A, and they did manage to get it. Analog now buying back into the fight. Lumiere dropping low as well, but alone zips in. Vortex connecting onto the PA. Pulling RDO in, but the second it wears off, RDO is dishing out the damage, critting down everyone as they get through the Aegis. They get through alone. Now Lumiere is really by himself. He's going to try and hold his ground. Oh my god, he more than holds his ground. He takes down RDO. That's a dieback on that PA. And Lumiere... I mean, does he leave at this point? He's by himself. But he is so damn strong. He's going to burn through the tier 4 towers. Analog, though, able to jump in onto him. Vitaly tries to help out, but he's going to be taken down by the damage. But here comes Michael back into the fight. Throwing down the Will-O-Wisp. Lumiere just does not care. He continues to push his way forward. Very nearly takes down Analog again. And Vitaly's in a similar situation. He's dropping low, trying to get to the fountain. But Sacred traps him. Hits him up with the arena. They'll take down everyone who's still standing. And that will be the GG. Lumiere... Uh, he was by himself in the base, but he just kept on fighting through all of it, and Hikori just couldn't stop him. Yeah, and it just became a situation where as soon as RDO actually ends up committing that BKB, he really can't stand up versus anyone in that game. But Io Coddle, with a gyrocopter just constantly putting damage into you, it felt like... Really, if that Roche respawns two, three minutes earlier where Hikori has so much control over the Roshan area, that game is so much different. But instead, it stalls out. Infamous find those two huge kills to then open up the entire route. Hikori have no entrance into the pit. And I think after that Roche, the game just got so complicated for them to do anything. They don't have a target anymore. And even when Vitali is blinking in, ravaging, hitting three heroes, they simply don't have enough damage or farm to keep anyone pent up and unfortunately they kind of just get washed it feels like it, again that Roche is so brutal because it, two minutes earlier they have so much control there's no way Infamous even tried to make their way to the pit but instead everything just flips on its head because of that one kind of freak circumstance and then of course you can't discredit Infamous enough their execution was amazing especially Michael just finding so much with every single will -O wisp chaining into a lone's uh, electric vortex but still I just feel like that Roche was just brutal for Hikori. Yeah, and that's 
one of the things about Dota, I suppose, that Roche timer is still got that little element of randomness to it. And as you said, the difference of one to two minutes on that timer means Hikori, maybe they don't take Roche straight up, but they're at least in a position to contest for it. Whereas with what we actually saw there, they lost heroes, they had to back away, Infamous could take it pretty much for free, and then they were just able to really seize control throughout the rest of the match. So it is unfortunate, but that's the way that it goes. And for Hikori, it just felt like their team fight really didn't work anymore at a certain point. The BKBs get picked up, alone in particular, grabbing his. So Gardig and Vitali with that sort of Static Storm Ravage combo were not nearly as effective in a lot of circumstances. It almost baited them in. We saw a couple of times they drop those abilities and then Sacred says, okay, it's my time. He blinks in, he drops the arena, and now those heroes who tried to rush in to take advantage of what they thought was their initiation are trapped in an arena with Lumiere. Yeah, and really, I think Sacred is the one to point out in that early mid-game. Every single time we were seeing Hikori just overstand a few little bit, just millimeters. They were just a little bit too over the line. There was always the punishment. There was always the quick arena. And catching and really slowing down, I think, Analog in particular, where this Void Spirit, which was unkillable and a monster they had to deal with, suddenly became a secondary target. I really felt like Alone was constantly jumping both Gardic and Elmisho, and Analog was not able to fulfill the same role on Michael and A, and I think that's where the game really started to become way more difficult for them. Not to mention, I mean, they picked Connell Storm Spirit. Of course Alone's going to have a good game. Mm -hmm. Just getting absolutely set up, and uh, I was a little bit worried watching that game. Alone kept jumping in, and sometimes those jumps weren't going well. He was sort of burning through a lot of mana, maybe getting a little over-aggressive at times, but You've got to let him play his game, and in the end it works out, 14, 5, and 17, so sure there were some stumbles here and there, but for the most part when he jumped in it worked to the benefit of his team, and that's all Infamous could really ask for. So they get themselves the win, their first match of the Pro Series, their first victory as well. Meanwhile for Hikori, a very unfortunate inauspicious 0-3 start, the question now uh, can they avoid going for the 0-4 and 4 start? One last match here to close out this series, and Hikori, they've, they've got to get points. I mean, it's still day one, there's going to be plenty of time beyond this, but just for the momentum's sake, for the mental game, try and recover. They've lost three straight matches, but we have seen them still put themselves, I think, in good positions. They just haven't really been able to take that next step forward. So we'll see what adjustments they can make going into that next game, but they certainly need to make them at this stage. Yep. Tide lost. So sad. That is, that is true, right? First time the Tidehunter has lost today, so... Well, that's another strike against Akori, unfortunately. Three straight losses, and they broke the Tidehunter's win streak. So, we'll see if they can earn redemption. That final game of the day is going to be coming up in just a couple of minutes now. So, we'll be stepping away for a bit, but when we return, it'll be game two between Infamous and Akori. <laughs> 